All right, gang, I do have a story for you guys this morning, or this afternoon, I should say. It's lunchtime, but I do have a story for you guys. We're going to Las Vegas this time, and I was going to talk about the Chicago uh, shooting incident that happened. Everybody's talking about that. I watched the body cam footage, and it really, really looks like the suspect that was shot by the police is pulling a handgun from his waistband uh, and so I, it just looks like the police shot somebody who was going to pull a gun and aim it at them. I don't know. It's just it's too hard to distinguish on the body cam. The jury's out. Um, I mean, it just looks that way, you know. And my, you know my feelings that if you aim a gun at a police officer, yeah, you're going to get shot uh, in most cases. So uh, I looked around and I seen if there was any stories that were a little bit more distinguished because that one's kind of gray. And I did find this one in Las Vegas. And it kind of sticks out, stands out because it deals with domestic violence of sorts. And, and so I wanted to bring it to your attention. It deals with the Las Vegas police identifying a suspect in the woman's killing as a correctional officer with the Nevada Department of Corrections. A state correctional officer has been identified as the man suspected of killing his ex-girlfriend early Saturday, leaving their two young children to find her body in his Southeast Valley home, per the Las Vegas Review-Journal. Now, Metropolitan Police Department Homicide Lieutenant Ray Spencer confirmed Sunday that the police are looking for 41-year-old Christopher Gerard Caggiano. He remained at large more than 24 hours after the woman's body was found and was believed to be driving a 2017 White Nissan Rogue with Nevada license plate 69B, as in boy, 230. State government employment records list Caggiano as a Nevada corrections officer since at least 2014. He was most recently assigned to High Desert State Prison in Indiana Springs, roughly 40 miles northwest of Las Vegas. And that was per Department of Corrections spokeswoman Brooke Santina. Now, as of Sunday, police had not found or spoken with Caggiano, per Lieutenant Raymond Spencer. We were following up on leads and have, have him identified. I was just told those leads have been exhausted. That's per the lieutenant. And it was just before 9 a.m. Saturday when the 911 call came in. Police said on the other end of the line were his two children, both under 10. Police said a nine-year-old girl told police dispatcher that their mom, thought to be in her early 30s, was dead in a bedroom at their father's townhouse in the 4600 block of Dealer's Choice Way. She was lying in a pool of blood with at least one gunshot wound. Per Lieutenant Raymond Spencer, uh, at noon, homicide detectives had identified Caggiano as the suspect but did not immediately release his name or description. He fled before the officers arrived. And so, again, you can find the whole story in the description box below if you want to go read that whole entire story. So I just wanted to bring that story to your attention and, uh, you know, kind of what's going on in Las Vegas there. As of now, they're still searching for uh, Officer Gerard Caggiano. And, uh, you know, again, it goes back to the correlation, law enforcement, which means police or corrections, and domestic violence. What is there a correlation between law enforcement and corrections and domestic violence? Now, I know domestic violence happens in every occupation. It's just a human thing. It's not an occupational thing. But, and I didn't think this would come up, so I didn't search the statistics. But I'm curious to know if anybody knows, especially anybody that's an analyst in law enforcement or an analyst in domestic violence, what are the statistics of domestic violence offenders that are in law enforcement and or corrections. That's an interesting statistic to know, right? News Now Yucaipa, keeping you guys informed and up to date on what's going on.